What is going on, dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, tonight, it's like 3 a.m. <laughs> for me, but whatever. Um, I'm talking about Invoked. Now, I'm thinking about doing a whole, like, discussion things. I always think about doing different series. I just make videos as I feel like it. But I'm thinking about doing more of these where I pretty much take an archetype and with the new Master Rule edits, whatever you want to call it, Master Rule 5, Master Rule 3.5, Master Rule 2020 edited version, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the new rules are awesome. It takes a lot of Fusion, Synchro, and XZ's base decks and makes them playable again. And um, Invoke was already playable. I mean, we already saw it. Invoke Beck Knight, it would get a top here and there. It wasn't crazy. I mean, I don't know. Like, it was tier 2 at best. But it, you wouldn't be like... You wouldn't be super surprised if it topped a regional. YCS a whole other thing, but at least a regional for sure. And I really think we're getting, uh, you know, the Master Rules change really does buff this deck. As well as the fact that, I don't know, last night, right, was that last night? I'm all mixed up, whatever. We also just got a new Invoked Fusion Monster revealed, um, I believe last night if I'm not going crazy. Whatever. It's pretty good. Um, this is it right here. It's called Invoked... What is it? Algodies? Algodies. Uh, Algodies. I don't know. Um, but it's pretty cool. I'll read you what it says real quick before we get into um, the rest of the video. Um, it's a light fairy, level 8, 2,000 attack, 2,800 defense. It takes one Alistair, the Invoker, plus any fusion monster. Kind of generic there, some utility there that we'll get to. Um, you can only use this first effect once per turn. If this card is special summoned or if a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. And then once per turn, you can also banish a fusion monster from your graveyard. And then this card will gain attack equal to that monster's attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. Um, there. So it's a pretty good card. has a lot of versatility. You can uh, quick effects, summon it out, pop a card, or once you summon it out, you can summon it out, pop a card, and then it's just a disruption sitting there for the next turn, any next turn, anytime your opponent special summons, pop another card, right? Which is kind of nice, as well as it gets huge. This card gets huge. It can be disruption, removal, built in to a card that can also just put a ton of offensive pressure on your opponent, and uh, that's pretty cool. So, now that we see that and we know what the Masters are, I want to go a little more into uh, what Invoked really does, and just going over some stuff and talking about some things I want to just bring up here. So, we know this is a very powerful engine. We know engines like this have really done good in Yu-Gi-Oh! Those engines, and what I mean by that is the engines with the field spell that searches and the monster that it searches that gets you another search. So I'm talking about sub tears have been good. Uh, trick stars were at the top of the meta at one point. Um, and if Light Stage came back, I think it would be playable on a competitive level. Um, what's, what's a big one I'm missing? I feel like I'm missing a big one. No, maybe I'm not. No, I don't think I'm missing a big one. Maybe I am. I can't think. Evil Eyes are one as a deck that like really hasn't had a chance to flourish yet. But if it does, I think that will be a big part. That consistency um, there. And so Alistair, very very nice for that, as well as Magical Meltdown. Not too much to say there. And it also protects your fusions, so you can't be negated. And then um, you can kind of just go off sometimes. Um, Invocation, just really really strong fusion card that lets you fuse from the graveyard from either player's graveyard could you be so strong um, there which really really adds so much versatility to invocation so much um, I don't know playability with for, with the invocation it's just so good it's just so good right and then the um, the main monsters that we're used to seeing um, in like even pure and mech knight invoked is Makaba this is just your big disruption guy um, and Purgatrio, this is your guy that you're just going to try and run over your opponent with in one battle phase, end the turn in one in one go, or end the game in one go there. But there are also some other cards that become a little more interesting with the... Oh, actually, yeah. Well, there are a couple more cards that come in uh, a little more interesting with the introduction of this new monster, one of which is Alistair the Invoker of Madness. And we'll get to this a little later on on why, but if you don't know, if a um, monster is fusion summoned while you control this monster, you can discard a card, and if you do, you can add an invocation or a book of the law from deck to hand. Also, if it leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can add an Omega Summon to hand. Now, Omega Summon's not great, but invocation, we know that's good. That's going to let you possibly summon another uh, fusion monster, and with another new good one, you could possibly be setting up, like, um, Macabre plus... 
our new one, uh, Al Algoides, Algoides, whatever, um, and setting up. So you have a, a pop a monster, win a monster, a special summon, and you also have obviously the, the negate. At least a monster negate depends what else is in your hand uh, with Makava. So like right there, that becomes a little bit better of a board going first, as well as uh, and Book of the Law is a little more interesting. We'll get to that in a second. But this is a nice link monster for them. It's a beater, whatever, generic. So speaking of Book of the Law, if you don't know what Book of the Law does, it lets you tribute any invoked monster as cost to special summon an invoked monster from your extra deck with a different original attribute from that monster's. So with this, th with the new monster, because its effect activates on summon, this can become an, a legit disruption, um, as well as like possible ways to play through uh, boards going second, where you know go, going first you set up a Makaba and you set Book of the Law. If you you use Makaba to negate something, and if your opponent has extenders through there and tries to play through that, you could then Book of the Law tribute your Makaba. Oh wait, no, Makaba's light, isn't it? Oh, it has to be a different attribute. That doesn't work, but there are other instances too. I mean, that specific one doesn't work, but I mean anything. It could be something like you go into the the new guy pop a monster then you use this guy to get out purgatrio and because that monster was the last thing like in the way you're able to kill or like just stuff like that it gives you so much more versatility and i think this card's decent i'm not saying it's crazy good and you gotta play it at three but it might be a really interesting one or two of in a more pure version of this deck and i think uh that's what i like so much about the new card is that at first glance you're just like oh it's just okay it's just another option but when you really dig deeper it makes these cards that weren't as good way better um, in the deck and so that would be one of the best applications is like going from something into that uh, that new guy to pop a card and then also on, on your next turn you're going to be able to make him huge and make a big battle phase push which is um, really really nice so book of the law i definitely like it more than i did before um, with the new guy uh, Omega Sum, I just want to, I don't know, bring it up. It's its really nothing crazy here, but it, it, it targets any number of banished invoked monsters with different names. It special summons them um, in defense position. I guess it's kind of interesting because if you, because the guy, the new guy takes a fusion monster, so if you banish a fusion monster from grave to make him, you'll have a fusion in banish, and you can use this to summon him. If you got him banished somehow, some way, you could then summon him from banish, and then he would get a pop, and, you know, that's decent. Um, so I don't know, like, like it's interesting, I don't think it's very good, it's a trap, this might even be still a going second deck, um, mainly, but, yeah, it was just interesting. Uh, Elysium's another card that's very interesting, I mean, we know Elysium is pretty spicy, we know this card, um, can be pretty good, but this card is a card that you really can struggle to get out sometimes because of the restriction we saw with Master Rules 4 for a lot of it, and, and having to open up zones, and then... Uh, not really wanting to make this until it's like a follow-up play way, way after. Uh, but now, I think it could be possible to set up possible turn one boards with like Elysium Macaba, Stuff like that, which is actually pretty good. And, um, you know, I like it. <laughs> I dig it. There, and then the other one that's actually interesting is Invoked Ragin. So, one thing that's interesting about Ragin is that uh, Invoked, I actually kind of like to play Instant Fusion. And the new monster can take any generic fusion monster as materials. So there's that, as well as Book of the Law that we just looked at. You could literally instant fusion out of Ragin, Book of the Law tribute the Ragin to get a Macabre out. And right there, like, that kind of works. I mean, it's, it's a makeshift Macabre, but you know what? It's a disruption. If you needed a disruption really bad and your hand was kind of jank, that can get you there sometimes. Um, and then it's a fusion engraved to possibly summon the other guy. If you, like, you already drew other pieces of the engine, you can end on both which is uh, not too shabby, right? So um, that's pretty interesting. And when we look at all this stuff, like I just think it's just such a nice engine. You don't have to, the main deck engine is so small. And that's another thing that's very, very good about this deck uh, and, and decks like this that tend to be like this is trick stars. Like your tricks, your legit trick star engine is like eight monsters, three uh, light stage. If, if light stage is at three, like three in the terraform series, or four cards, like 12 cards, and maybe three reincarnation, like 15 cards. You've got 25 slots in the rest of your deck to kind of make it whatever you want. You can make it a going second deck, in which case you would actually drop reincarnation and have more slots. Um, you could play a going first deck, you can make it a trap heavy variant. You could play heavy hand traps. You could maximize on the draw reincarnation combo or whatever you want. And it just, you have the world is your oyster. Like, really, you have so much space. And same thing with this deck. You're literally playing three Alistair, three Meltdown, and the Terraforming. That's seven. 
two or three invocation. Most people play two, I think, but some people play three, so we'll say three max there is even ten. And, like, that's it. Maybe now we'd play one or two copies of Book of the Law. Like, this engine for this deck, psh, son, we're looking at 12 cards, like, max. Max. And like, 10 most of the time, probably. Um, so you have a lot of different versatility. We could play the Mech Knight stuff. You could play the Sky Striker engine. You could play other stuff. This card takes, this stuff takes your normal summon. So as long as the other stuff works, um, you know, without the normal summon, you could be good to go. I mean, we can see something like Invoked Thunder Dragon. You set up a Disruption and the Floodgate in a Colossus. That could be good as well. Um, and you banish them with Invocation. They could get effects on Banish, stuff like that that kind of can, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, end up like somersaulting into more uh, good stuff. So, I don't know. I just want to do a quick video talking about this deck, and don't forget about it, because I feel like Invoked stuff, the Invoked engine kind of fell to the wayside. I think everybody remembers it as being a powerful engine, and they should, because it is. Um, but I think, I think some people have lost a little respect for it, because we haven't seen it be very good. And I think uh, it definitely has an opportunity to make a comeback. This card, and, and the, the last thing is, is, like, we don't even know we just got this card shown to us. It's entirely possible we get another card shown to us. Like, Konami weirdly likes to do, like, two cards of support. And, and it's random. You get some some archetypes get one card of support in a in a set, and other times they'll get five new cards of support. Like, it really depends. Um, it could be random. We could get another card for them. Like, it'd be crazy, but if it wasn't, like, if it was something other than a monster, or like a fusion, um... But I'd still be into it. You know, I love this engine. And hopefully you guys do too. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this down below. As always, uh, thank you so much for watching this video, of course. Um, and, uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't, I guess. <laughs> right there. I'm going to end it off there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your night. And peace.